Uh. Oh, really? Who's <laughs> prêt? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you five Vietnamese dishes that are influenced by French. And in this video, I have a special guest who is from France and he's also a TikTok star and a YouTuber. Let's welcome Will. Will, hello? Where are you? Bonjour. One fact about us is that I'm 155 and he's 190. Wow. So that's why we're talk to each other like this. But anyways, are you ready, Will? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Oh. The first dish that we're gonna try today is pho sốt vàng, which is a Vietnamese version of the French beef stew. Beef bourguignon. This hearty noodle soup features tender beef, onions with aromatic Viet spices. Let's see how it tastes, okay? The broth is spicy and sweet, the beef is so soft, and the tendon has an interesting crunchy texture. It smells good! Yeah, it's good. Yeah. You can eat fat, right? One, yes. Many uh, French, we don't eat the fat. Mm. So usually it's the same for bull cha. We always want the, bo the bowl of meatball mm -hmm. because there's no fat. The lean meat in that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But have you tried it? Yeah. Did you I, like I, it? I mean, I eat the fat, but it's not my favorite. It's like I'm, I'm still French a bit. <laughs> we add the red wine from Bourgogne. Oh. Really strong wine. In France, they use red wine, but in yeah. here, I think they just use rice wine. But how did you like the, the taste? Was that like just taste like one of your French food? I know, like um, pot au feu. Yeah, that? pot au feu. So, yeah, the feu is an influ influence between the Chinese noodle soup mm -hmm. and the uh, pot au feu in France. So, what is the pot au feu exactly? So, it's um, it's usually in the past it was a food for poor people mm -hmm. or people that go to war military. Oh. They just put a pot, so that's why it's pot. Yeah, yeah. But they put all the veggies, uh, usually carrots, um, potatoes, this kind of veggies, okay. and they add the beef with some water, mm -hmm. and then they let it boil together. Ah, okay. But it's not as the feu where you will wait like one day, right? The broth oh, okay. is, is preparing for one day yeah. to really uh, extract uh, the, um, the, the herbs and yeah, the from the, the, the bones. bones. Yeah. yeah to get a good broth. So of course, the feu is, for me, is way better than the pot au feu. I remember when I was younger, whenever I got sick, like got a fever, my mom usually bought me pho, like a bowl pho, mm. and next day, I'm gonna be fine. Yeah. So it's very good when you're sick or you have a hangover. So that's why my shirt said like pho. Mm. It's the best food for a hangover cure. So if you're wondering where you can get this shirt, it's actually what the pho merch. And I'm gonna leave the link below so you guys can check it out. We also have a wide variety of what the pho designs. One of our best sellers is this bun cha shirt right here. Let me show you a bunch of good food besides pho. Cool puns, right? So visit store.whatthepho.vn.com to purchase your favorite shirt before they're out of stock. Now, we're gonna go for a Vietnamese French drink, which is coffee. Did you know Vietnam is the world's second largest coffee exporter? You can easily buy Vietnamese coffee anywhere in Vietnam from the coffee shops on the sidewalk to fancy restaurants. It's a rainy day, so it's perfect for a hot cup of coffee. Alright, so we have the egg coffee here. I actually have the egg ice cream with coffee. And what do you have? I think it's Bak Siu. Bak Siu. What's in Bak Siu? Do you know? It's, uh, it's a mix of condensed milk and cafe, right? Yes, and milk. A lot of milk And milk. Well. Uh, yep. uh, let's try it, okay? Let's go. The coffee is very different. Is that we use condensed milk? It's yeah, because true, true. yeah, in the past the milk is very scarce and very expensive. Oh. So that's why Vietnamese people substitute it with condensed milk. So we can use it multiple times and we can store it. Okay. So what's the coffee culture in France? So the coffee culture in France is quite close from the coffee culture in Vietnam. Basically, after the lunch, we go to the coffee place. We just chill drink our coffee, talk. It's a moment where we relax before the afternoon walk. It's really common to do it in France. 
uh, and we, we always do it. So when I come to Vietnam, I really feel the connection because here you always go at a coffee place yeah. to hang out, to study, to have a chit chat with your friend. Coffee in Vietnam is actually stronger than in France. Actually it is, because uh, usually when we, we have a famous coffee in France, it's the short coffee, we call it Café Serré. Café Serré basically is like a, a black coffee, like really, but it's a small cup. You can see in, in the movie, or it's like a small cup of coffee. Okay. And you, it's not like big as in Vietnam. Right. When I order a black coffee in Vietnam, it's like a full one like this. Right. So of course after I cannot sleep for uh, 24 hours. Already. Yeah. <laughs> We, we don't like to take our, our coffee and, and drink it somewhere. We want to sit down and enjoy it with our friends. If you go to a coffee shop and you say, hey, I want to take away my coffee, like the French will be like, what? what? <laughs> we will be like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? All right, well, how do you say cafe sua in Vietnamese? Uh, su uh. Say it one more time. Su uh. Why? Why, why do you uh, say that? Because when I learn Vietnamese, I have to say, um, I learn the song nga, uh, like this. It's nga, uh. So if you want to learn Vietnamese, remember, you have to stop. Just imagine the pleasure. Nga, uh, and then you speak good Vietnamese. The third Vietnamese food that was influenced by the French is bánh mì. During World War I, the French left Asia to help with the war effort. Their baguettes flooded in Saigon market with affordable price. Vietnamese in the South were free to modify French dishes to include local ingredients. They replaced mayonnaise with butter and replaced the more expensive cold cuts with pork and pickled vegetables. Bánh mì is also an official word in Oxford English Dictionary. And you're not cold? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the problem when you're too tall in Vietnam. <laughs> too tall, not good in Vietnam. It does cover half of your legs. Yeah. <laughs> and I look like a squid game. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yee! Bang me! Okay, I'm gonna step on here so I can be taller. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Mm, good. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so in here I think they have pate. Yeah. Uh, the cold cuts. It's called zambong, and then she has tasu. Zambong uh, in French is jambon. Oh really? Yeah, it's cool. the same word. Okay, so the same word then. Yeah, yeah. How you say it again? Jambon. We say zambong. Zambong, yeah. There you go. And then some um, carrots and cilantro, coriander. Cilantro. This yeah. is cilantro. Yeah, this is cilantro. Yeah. But what's the difference between by me in here and by me in France? In Vietnam, the bang mi pate has so many things with it, right? Yeah. You have all the veggies, always many fresh veggies, many stuff on it. Yeah. And the bang mi uh, pate in France is just bang mi with pate. Oh, okay. No veggies. And uh, we, the most famous bang mi in France is really simple. It's ham with butter. We call it jambon beurre. Uh, it's like 50% of all the bang mi eaten in France are jambon beurre. And then we have other bang mi like uh, with cheese, bang mi with chicken and uh, mayonnaise. It's usually the normal bang mi in France is uh, 30 cm to 40 cm. Oh, this long? Yeah, yeah, so and it's like... Bang mi is just like this small. Yeah, this is a small bang mi. And so right. in, in Vietnam, I usually eat one or two. Yeah. But in France, just one is enough. I love bang mi. Yeah. Another Vietnamese French dessert that I want to introduce you is flung cake. We're gonna go to a famous place for flung cake and it's called Kem Karamen Hang Han. I will leave all the addresses and prices of the food we try today in the description. So don't forget to check it out. When you're 190 in Vietnam, there's two types of seats. There's a seat like this, Vietnamese, and then there's a seat like this for foreigners. Yeah. But still small. Wow, it's raining so hard. Mm. But is it uh, impolite to do that? Why? I'm sitting on the table. <laughs> no? Yeah, it's fine. This is a chair, but ah, okay. at the same time, it's a table. It's stronger now. <laughs> can you do Asian squat? Asian squat, I, I can do, but it's hard, you see? You okay, see? try it, try it. Try it. Mm. Mm. It is 
so creamy and it's so rich and mm. I can smell the sugary and it just tastes so good so like is it from France or do you know like the, um, where it already originated? The flan is a European dish Okay It's really famous in UK, really famous in France and in France, so we have this kind of dish in in, uh, in France. It's more common in UK, mm. but it's um, really famous in France for crème brûlée. So crème, crème brûlée. brûlée is a specific flan like that, where the top is is grilled, is is uh, burned on the with a fire. Crispy, right? Yeah. So for me, it's a favorite dish. Yeah. It's like crispy. Then under, it's a little. Um, soft and then at the bottom it's really soft and then you mix the three together and you eat it and it's a perfect uh, dessert yum actually in vietnamese we call creme brulee kem chai kem chai kem chai and mm. you can find it at like a sand buffet mm. and then like it's uh, burning on top as well and the sugar is very crunchy and inside is very soft as well yeah and then we usually just eat it alone but then like with just this creme brulee um, in the u.s we call it like blank flan cake Plan. And then you can have it with um, boba, or you can have it with fruits and jelly. Fruits, mm. yeah. And then it's like it's gonna call te caramel. Caramel che. Te caramel. Che caramel. There you go. Che caramel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but in France, you should eat it alone, right? Yeah, it's really a dessert, uh, really common in all the restaurant, and we eat it in dessert mm. just before we can. You can drink with a coffee or just before the coffee, oh. and then is the time we go for the coffee after usually. So you drink it with the coffee you mix it with the coffee or what? yeah you can eat it with coffee not mix it but dr mm. uh, you can drink the coffee too oh. or when you eat your dessert then you go for the coffee place or you drink your coffee the coffee is always the end of the meal but in vietnam we drink coffee first yeah yeah this time we drink coffee <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> Chua, the antiep. All right, let's go. But before moving on to the last dish, if you like this content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to follow Will as well. Wow, we have eight plates, but it's only sixty-four thousand Vietnam dong. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like two point five dollar. Yeah. It's like we eat like so many. This in France is like uh, twenty euro, or, no, no, more fifty euro. Because wow. one creme brulee is usually 8 or 10 euro in restaurant. Oh, that's good to know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Guys, come to Vietnam and live. It's cheaper. Because it's cheaper. <laughs> Last but not least, snail noodle soup. Bún ốc. The French is known for delicious escargot topped with herbs, butter, and garlic. Vietnamese people have different ways to cook snails. From snails cooked with coconut milk that you have to suck it out, to warm, hearty snail noodle soup. This is an iconic Hanoi dish, which consists of savory and sour broth, beef slices, crab, Vietnamese bologna, and of course, snails. This place is a very famous place for the snail noodle as well. And as you can see during COVID, they have this screen to like protect people from interacting with each other. This one we have here is the fried red stick. In Vietnam, we usually eat it with pho. Mm -hmm. And then other noodles as well, we usually dip it in the noodles. Is it the same in France? Uh, in France, we love to dip in the soup, but oh. usually it's bread. Yeah, it's bread okay. we dip with soup all the time. Yeah. Mm, okay. But um, in France, they don't have snail soup, right? We don't have snail soup, but we have snail, normal snail. Mm. But we prepare directly in the shell with a lot of spice, lots of condiment. Mm -hmm. And then you cook it on the oven oh. and then you eat it. Yeah. With like cheese on top and herbs? The like cheese that? on top is more uh, Vietnamese. I know we do it in Vietnam. Not the, uh, like not but the big, um, big um, snail. Not the big, the big one, like you know, the, in French is coquille Saint Jacques. Oh, what is that? <laughs> French? Can you Share please something. translate it? Coquille Saint Jacques. <laughs> oh, forget. Anyway, in Vietnam, you do it with the uh, cheese on the top. Oh, okay, uh, okay. I saw it already, but we don't. We don't. Usually, the cheese is at the end of the meal. Oh. We have uh, some good bread and some good wine. Ah, oh, wow, yeah. fancy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's enjoy our food. Ngon. Ah, ngon. Ngon fit. No, no, yeah. We're pretty full today, but it's good. We're gonna finish it. This is the spice, right? Yes, that's the chili. Minced chili, maybe? Ooh. 
don't put the full spoon in your noodles because okay, it's not spicy at first, the but when you spoon. put it in your mouth and then you swallow it, it's burn your tongue. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I think it's okay. Oh my gosh. You can see also the, the fat. I don't know if it's fat or the oil. Yeah, oil. This is garlic, of course it's gonna be crazy. With and then the chili. Onion. Okay, oh my gosh. The broth. Don't cry. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> no, it's okay. Are you sure? Yeah, it's you, not you strong. You swallow it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. No, honestly, it's okay because there's some place it's crazy spicy, no? Okay, okay. He can handle spiciness. Yeah, That's good. This is the baby snail and this is mommy snail. Okay, with the broth and the snail. Chewy. Mm. Well, Crunchy. The snail is really different than the French one. It's, um, I think it's sea sn snail, no? Okay. It's from the river of the sea. I think it's from the river of the sea. We can feel like the, the sea. Oh, really? A bit of the river, I don't know, but it's like from the water. Yeah, I was wondering, what is this? This is called Zal in Vietnamese. Zol. Yes. Okay. And as you can see, it's like ground pork mm. with pig ears and with mushrooms. Pig ears? Yeah, pig ears. That's why it gives the crunchiness in there. And then with Let's mushroom. Try. Yeah, try it. With mushroom too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And peppers. They have it in Vietnamese sandwich as well. Like yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to teach you some Vietnamese now, okay? Yeah. Hấp sen. Hấp sen. Việt Nam. Hấp sen Việt Nam. Ngon quá. Ngon. Ngon quá. Ngon quá. Yup. Nhưng mà hấp sen Pháp ngon hơn. Okay guys, so we just finished the last dish and we'll actually finish it. Everything. <laughs> good job. I actually have still the broth, but it was really, really good. What dish was your favorite? Honestly, this food is really good. The snail one, but for me the best one was bus of bang. Yeah, for me it's bang me because I really like the pate. And guys, please leave it down in the comment if you have tried the snail noodles before. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to subscribe. We're in Vietnam as well. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.